CSUN looks to change its admission requirements regarding impaction, Magic Johnson pays a visit to CSUN, and the city of Los Angeles has major plans to change the LA River. This is Valley View News. Hello and welcome to Valley View News. I'm Jarena Silva. And I'm Jamie Perez. The Democratic and Republican parties will hold crucial primaries in New York this Tuesday. In the Democratic Party, Bernie Sanders is hoping for his eighth victory in a row over Hillary Clinton. New York offers 291 delegates. Clinton currently has a 14 percent lead in the polls. In the Republican Party, Donald Trump faces off against Ted Cruz for 95 delegates. Trump has a 33 percent lead over Cruz in the polls. Hillary Clinton leads the Democratic presidential primary race and needs 626 more delegates to win. Donald Trump needs 496 more delegates to win the GOP nomination. Five states will be up for grabs next week. A tentative agreement has been reached between faculty and Cal State University officials postponing a potential five-day strike. Faculty at over 23 Cal State campuses demanded a 5% pay raise. Officials in the faculty union reached a tentative agreement of a 10.5% increase spread over three years. An immediate 5% increase will be granted on June 30th. The next day, a 2% increase will take effect. Then in July of 2017, faculty will receive the remaining 3.5%. The pay raise over the next three years will cost the Cal State system about $200 million. With the Cal State system experiencing overcrowding, CSUN and other Cal States have changed their enrollment policies for the fall 2016 semester. Valley View News reporter Mariah Robinson has more on this story. High school graduates and transfer students all over the nation are preparing to attend a four-year college in the fall. For some applicants, admission into Cal State Northridge is requiring a lot more than before. Overcrowding within the CSU system is requiring all Cal State universities to give priority admission to local applicants. CSUN's Vice President of Undergraduate Studies, Dr. Elizabeth Adams, says most of the changes are affecting applicants outside of CSUN's service areas. The student lives in our service area and they meet the minimum CSU requirements, they are admissible. If they don't live in our service area, then they have to meet a much, much higher standard for admission. So for your average CSUN student um, who lives in the San Fernando Valley, and that is your average CSUN student, nothing changed. Um, what changed is if you live in Oxnard or if you live in downtown LA, depending on what part of downtown LA you're in. For transfer and commuter applicants, like Pierce College student London Gagné, CSUN is a popular and inexpensive choice for some majors. Impaction is beneficial for me because I am a transfer student. I'll be going to CSUN in the fall for the film program. And um, again, I do think it's beneficial because I get first priority versus if I didn't get first priority, I have to go to schools like USC or UCLA and I would never be able to afford schools like that. Several weeks from now, high school graduates and transfer students will find out if admissions into a CSUN program of their choice is possible. In Winnetka, I'm Mariah Robinson for Valley View News. CSUN students celebrated cultural diversity during the school's annual diversity fair. Valley View reporter Alexis Liggins has more. Dancing, food, and fun was all around as the 19th annual carnival took place last week. Cultures were represented from continents including South America, Asia, Europe, and even Antarctica. The organizers of this event used interactive activities to engage with students. As you can see behind me, students from all over the campus came out to this event to learn more about the different cultures, not only here on CSUN's campus, but the cultures around the world. CSUN's 40,000 students represent a wide range of cultures. Events coordinator Audrey Martinez says this event brings them together. We have a very rich and diverse culture here. We have a lot of international students, and really our point here is to bring diversity and inclusivity on campus. Throughout the day, performers like this African drum group showcased their culture through dance and song and invited students to join in. What really caught more of a, my eye was the um, actually the African dancing. It was very um, motivating how awesome a movement can be with the dancer's story. But the dancing and singing weren't the only part of the carnival that showcased a sense of culture. Students got to try various foods. They also created traditional art like this Russian paper doll. I think it's really cool to show like different cultures so people can appreciate the different aspects of it and are able to like see 
how different cultures interact with each other. Although the event is over, you still have a chance to learn more about different cultures by joining a cultural club or organization from the list posted in the Matador Involvement Center. Reporting for Valley View News, I'm Alexis Liggins. Police at Cal State Northridge are searching for two men who attempted to kidnap a woman near the campus dorms two weeks ago. The victim was walking along Lindley Avenue and Lassen Street when a vehicle approached and drove slowly next to her. The victim told police that a male passenger attempted to talk to her. When she ignored him, she says he exited the vehicle and chased after her. The woman was able to outrun the man and reached a family member who was waiting for her further down Lassen. The passenger was described as a Hispanic man in his mid-30s wearing a white t-shirt. The driver had similar characteristics and was last seen also wearing a white t-shirt. The vehicle was a late model white Toyota Camry. Anyone with information is asked to contact the CSUN police. Two Southern University students were killed last week in a shootout at a party they were attending. The victims were both 19. A former Southern University football player was allegedly one of the gunmen. 22-year-old Ernest Bernard Felton, who played football at Southern in 2012, was arrested last Sunday. One of the victims was a track and field athlete and the other was a student athletic trainer at Southern. Police in Boyle Heights have shot and killed a suspect who was holding a hostage at knife point. Officers spotted the suspect through a window. Once inside, they opened fire. The hostage was not injured. The third suspect in the Belgian airport bombing has been identified. He is Mohamed Abrini. Investigators say he admits to being the mystery man in the hat seen in surveillance videos before and after the bombings. Abrini was arrested last week in connection with the November Paris attacks. Charges against him include taking part in terror activities and terrorist murders. A 7.1 earthquake struck near Pakistan's capital and other cities last Sunday. Officials say information hasn't been received about damages from the earthquake hit areas. Television footage showed residents praying in public. The quake was the strongest one since October when a 7.5 earthquake damaged thousands of homes in the northwest. Medical teams in India are treating hundreds of people after fire at a Hindu temple. The fire killed at least 110 people and injured at least 380 people. Hundreds were rushed to the hospital following the fire. The fire was caused by fireworks stored inside the temple. Authorities are questioning five of the workers on the site about the fireworks. Police say the temple was not given permission to store the fireworks after questions about the safety of the fireworks arose. Secretary of State John Kerry attended a memorial ceremony in Hiroshima last Monday for the victims of the American atomic bomb attack 71 years ago. The bomb killed 140,000 Japanese. Kerry is the highest ranking United States administration official to visit the site. Kerry says his appearance is a reminder of the strong alliance the U.S. and Japan have forged over the past seven decades. CIA Director John Brennan says he would not use waterboarding as a form of interrogation, even if ordered by a future president. Republican presidential candidates Donald, Donald Trump and Ted Trump Cruz and Ted have, have both, both said suggested. they would authorize they would waterboarding if elected if president. Elected. President morning, Obama banned Brennan. the practice in his first few days in office. Waterboarding and other interrogation techniques were used on terrorist suspects after the 9-11 attacks. An unnamed Navy officer has been charged with espionage and attempted espionage. The officer was arrested eight months ago, but he wasn't formally charged until earlier this month. The officer is a lieutenant commander. He was taken into custody at an airport in the U.S. Pacific Command region. The Naval Criminal Investigative Service and the FBI continue to investigate the case. Some of the other charges against him include illegally sharing information, falsifying records, prostitution, and adultery. When we come back, failure on the recent uterus transplant and Magic Johnson's visit to CSUN. When I was in foster care, I never knew when I would have to move. So I always had my suitcase ready to go. Then one day I was adopted. My new parents opened their hearts and home to me. My parents cook my favorite breakfast for me every morning. My parents take me on trips I never thought I would go on. They gave me a home and an even better reason to use that suitcase. My parents aren't perfect, but they're perfect for me.
the first uterus transplant performed in the United States has failed because of a yeast infection. Lindsay McFarland became the first patient in the U.S. to receive a uterus transplant. McFarland developed a fever and suffered complications that led to the removal of the newly transplanted uterus. The Cleveland Clinic was the first to perform the procedure in the U.S., but doctors in Sweden have performed the surgery on nine women since 2012. Thousands in Poland protested efforts to tighten abortion laws last weekend. A pro-abortion group organized street protests in Warsaw and other Polish cities. This was the second wave of street protests this month. Poland has a conservative government that promotes Catholic values and supports a total ban on abortion. Abortion is illegal in Poland except when pregnancy poses a serious threat to a woman's health or life. The heated debate is ongoing and has created a divide amongst Poles. New research finds some services deny support to those with anorexia unless their body mass index is below a certain threshold. A report from Centra Forum shows that mental health care providers refuse to treat about 23 percent of those under 18. The analysis also reveals the wait time has increased to two and a half years for some cases. Some of the reasons reported for turning people away include not being able to provide the services to deal with the problem and the person has not been unwell for a long enough time. New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio has signed into law a bill prohibiting smoking or chewing tobacco in sports venues and recreational areas. The ban includes City Field, home of the Mets, and the Yankee Stadium. The ban also extends to e-cigarettes. New York is the latest to join the anti-tobacco movement following San Francisco, Los Angeles, and Boston. A statewide ban in California is scheduled to take effect next year. A basketball great was invited to speak at Big Lecture on the CSUN campus last week. He provided students with life stories and some of his keys to success. Valley View News reporter Carlos Gonzalez takes us there. Well, I said yeah, because he's like one of my favorite players. The cheerleaders were out, the snack bar was in business, and the crowd was pouring in for Los Angeles Lakers legend Irvin Magic Johnson. CSUN men's basketball coach Reggie Theus is a longtime friend of Johnson and was on hand for the event. Johnson received a very warm welcome from the CSUN community. Many students recorded and took pictures capturing the moment. Everything that you want, if you take care of business while you're here. So don't worry about trying to get the job that you want. Johnson encouraged the audience to always exceed expectations, always give it your all, and never give up. One birthday girl even received the gift of a lifetime. After, Johnson saved time to sign autographs, take selfies, and more selfies. CSUN student Victoria Hernandez said she left Johnson's lecture motivated. I learned that um, having a vision and staying committed to that vision will honestly get you to wherever you want to be. Irvin Magic Johnson left many captivated with his play on the court, but today he left hundreds of students inspired with his words. In Northridge, Carlos Gonzalez, Valley View News. Now let's go to Jarvis Heron with the latest in sports. Thanks, Jamie. It was one for the ages last weekend in San Antonio. The Golden State Warriors were aiming for win number 72, and the Spurs were seeking to stay undefeated at home. Let's pick it up in the third quarter. Spurs forward Kawhi Leonard, he's going to roll off the screen and look at him driving to the basket, throwing it down with the one-handed slam. Went Leonard, 20 points, 13 rebounds, 5 assists. Steph Curry doing what Steph Curry does best, though, driving to the basket, and the foul gets it to go. Curry, 37 points, 5 assists, 2 steals. Here he is late in the fourth quarter, driving inside the kiss off the window. Warriors win the game 92 to 86. Golden State matched the 95-96 Bulls for most wins in a season. The Clippers defeated the Mavericks last weekend 98 to 91. Chris Paul is going to find JJ Redick for a corner three. Nothing but bottom of the net. Redick put up 20 points. Third period now. Paul penetrating, dishing to Blake Griffin for the lay-in. Griffin with 17 points, 11 rebounds, and seven assists. Late in the fourth quarter, now great ball movement here. Paul to Griffin to Jamal Crawford, who buries the corner three, finishing with 22 points. Clippers win their fifth straight game, and the Clippers have locked up the fourth seed in the Western Conference playoffs. The LA Kings finished second in the Pacific Division to the Anaheim Ducks. The Kings and San Jose Sharks are battling in round one of the NHL Stanley Cup playoffs. This reignites one of the NHL's biggest rivalries. The Sharks hope to erase what happened to them in 2014. 
in that first round meeting two years ago, the Sharks took a 3 to nothing lead in the seven-game series. But the Kings stormed back and won the last four games. This is the fourth time in the past six seasons the Kings and Sharks have met in a playoff series. Former New Orleans Saints defensive end Will Smith was killed last weekend. Smith and his wife were driving in New Orleans' lower garden district when their Mercedes-Benz SUV was rear-ended by a Hummer H2. The driver of the Hummer exchanged words with Smith and then pulled out a handgun and fired. Smith was shot multiple times and was pronounced dead at the scene. His wife Raquel Smith was transported to the hospital with two gunshot wounds. She underwent surgery and is recovering. The driver of the Hummer is in custody and has been identified as Cardell Hayes. Hayes is being charged with second-degree murder, and his bond was set at $1 million. Cal State Northridge men's baseball team lost a doubleheader to Long Beach State last weekend. In Game 1, Long Beach led 4-0 by the third inning. The Matadors responded by scoring two runs in the sixth and one more in the eighth, but it was not enough. Long Beach won 6-3. In Game 2, the Dirtbacks continued to dominate and won 12 to nothing. The Matadors will take on the Santa Barbara Gauchos in a three-game series this weekend. CSUN men's volleyball team beat UC San Diego last weekend 3-0. After a tight first set, the Matadors took control of the final two with major plays by Arvis Green and Josiah Byers. The victory came in the Matadors' final game of the season. After losing their last five games, the Matadors finished 14-15 overall and ranked 10th in the division conference. To golf now, Jordan Spieth appeared to have a second consecutive Masters victory in hand last Sunday. He had a five-shot lead as he started the back nine at Augusta National, but a letdown on the par 3 12th changed all of that. Spieth finds Ray's Creek here with his tee shot and was forced to take a drop. Spieth dropped 80 yards back to hit his third shot, but as you can see here, he caught it fat and he hit it in the water again. He would go on to make a quadruple bogey seven on the hole, but for Danny Willett, this was a day to remember. Check out on the 14th hole, his second shot, just decorating the flag stick here, get it to within four feet of the cup. He'd go on to make a birdie to 16 now. Another great approach off the tee, Willett. He's gonna have seven feet for birdie, and he gets it to go. Willett would win his first career Masters, try on that green jacket for the first time. And he's dreamed about this kind of day, but for it to actually happen, he said, is mind-boggling. The NCAA has approved a three-year moratorium on adding new bowl games. Officials felt too many losing teams were playing in the postseason. Last year, three teams with losing records played in bowl games. There are currently 41 college postseason games. This is the second time in five years the league has had to ban bowl expansion. Now let's go back to Jarena with more news. The city of Los Angeles is known for many things from Hollywood productions to the agonizing traffic on the 405 highway. But there is a rather large part of LA, 51 miles to be exact, that has largely been forgotten over the years. Anna Logan has more on this story. This is the LA River. Most of it is confined between concrete walls that were constructed after the city experienced devastating floods in the 1930s. But now, the city of Los Angeles has submitted a plan that would revitalize 42 miles of the river and its surroundings. The plan would tear up a significant amount of concrete in order to build parks, bike paths, and natural habitats. 11 miles of the riverbed, which would extend from the Autry Museum to downtown LA, would be reconstructed to support a flourishing ecosystem. Friends of the Los Angeles River and other environmental organizations have served as the driving force of the plan that would connect the community to the river and green space. This is a way to create these areas where there are even loops where families can ride their bikes through their communities and along the river and, you know, have access to a place for solace. I and mean, we all love to hear water and to be able to see birds and, and know that um, that's in our backyard. We don't have to drive somewhere to do it. Dr. Lorraine Ludquist says there are still to, important um, questions that need to be water, answered. Uh, who owns which water? Um, how much water does the river need in order to um, support the new ecosystems and restored ecosystems? What should we be doing with that water? We have biologists who can do things like count bird species and, and find out which species are, are um, coming to the river. The city of Los Angeles is currently awaiting approval on the $1.3 billion project. 
It hopes to split the final cost with the federal government. No matter what the cost ends up being, the initial 11-mile segment will take over a decade to complete. The revitalization of the river will take anywhere from 30 to 50 years to complete. The U.S. Army Corps of Engineers will be overseeing this process, and they're still currently working on their final report for the river. In Los Angeles, I'm Anna Logan, Valley View News. When we come back, we'll talk about Toyota's newly designed model and the MTV Movie Award recap. Okay, so you wouldn't give see. yourself or your loved one poison, would you? Then why would you take or give counterfeit medications that may contain the wrong or no active ingredient? Counterfeit medications are out there. They can be ineffective and harmful to your health. Maybe. Be a smart okay. consumer and know your That's pharmacy, especially if you're purchasing medication online. So, same time next week? Well, of course. Put away a few bucks, feel like a million bucks. For free tips to help you save, go to Feed the Pig. Millions of loving cats and dogs in shelters and rescues need our help to find a home. So go to the shelterpetproject.org, search your local shelters and rescues, and adopt already. Toyota is developing technology that will automatically take control of a vehicle. The Japanese car maker says the technology will subtly adjust the driver's actions in order to avert danger. Toyota will test the technology in a giant moving simulator near Mount Fuji. The simulator will make it possible to see how people respond in realistic crash scenarios. Yahoo is officially for sale. Media companies such as Time Incorporated and the Daily Mail are among those planning to make an offer. Over the past nine years, Yahoo's worth decreased from $255 billion to $34 billion. Yahoo will decide to take any offers later this month. Netflix will be hiking up subscription rates for all members starting in May. All members will now be paying $9.99 instead of $7.99. The $2 price increase only applied to new members as of last year, but now Netflix is making the change across the board. Business Insider says Netflix will still be a better deal than cable television. Typical television costs 30 cents an hour while Netflix costs less than a penny. This keeps Netflix at the top spot of best price per hour of entertainment. Now let's go to Anna Logan for news on entertainment. Thanks, Jarena. The 25th annual MTV Movie Awards were held last week at the Warner Brothers studio in Burbank. Dwayne The Rock Johnson and Kevin Hart hosted the awards. The biggest winners this year were Will Smith, the recipient of the MTV Generation Award, and Melissa McCarthy received the Comedic Genius Award. Star Wars The Force Awakens won Movie of the Year. Other movies that took home the gold popcorn were the cast of Straight Out of Compton, Amy, Deadpool, and Pitch Perfect. The best female performance was awarded to Chalice Theron for her role in Mad Max. The best male performance winner was Leonardo DiCaprio for his role in The Revenant. Actress Kirstie Alley has endorsed Donald Trump for president. The former Cheers actress tweeted her support last weekend. She says she has a good record of picking presidents. She says she backed Jimmy Carter, Ronald Reagan, George W. Bush, Bill Clinton, and President Obama. Alley's announcement was criticized by Trump opponents, but she says that doesn't bother her. Emmy and Tony Award-winning actor Hugh Jackman is changing lives, one cup of coffee at a time. The X-Men superhero has partnered with coffee giant Cure Green Mountain to help bean farmers and their families live sustainable lives. His cafe, Laughing Man in Manhattan, has been using beans grown from village farmers in Ethiopia. All of Jackman's profits from the co-op go to charity. Rock musician Bruce Springsteen canceled his concert in Greensboro, North Carolina last week. He canceled the upcoming performance to stand against North Carolina's new anti-LGBTQ law. This makes gender-neutral bathrooms illegal. Individuals are required to use public restrooms according to the gender on their birth certificate. Springsteen said canceling his performance was the strongest method of raising his voice against North Carolina's discriminatory laws. All concert tickets for Springsteen's April 10th show are being refunded. The Greensboro Coliseum estimated a loss of almost $100,000 in revenue. 
Fellow rock musician Brian Adams has also canceled all upcoming concerts in North Carolina over anti-LGBTQ laws. Now let's go back to Jamie Perez with more news. Thank you, Anna. A Starbucks in Florida is in hot water after replacing the name of a customer with an offending phrase. The employee wrote, Diabetes, here I come, on the unidentified man's grande white mocha beverage. The customer had a personal reason to be upset at the phrase because two of his sisters are diabetic. Starbucks headquarters says it is disappointed by the incident and is working directly with the customer to apologize for his experience. Grab your wickets, it's time to play cricket with the Royals. The Duke and Duchess of Cambridge, Prince William and Kate, spent a week in India seeing the extremes of poverty and wealth. They traveled to a slum and also attended galas with Bollywood stars. The Royals played cricket for three charities that helped provide children in the slums with an education. India was the number one place Catherine wanted to visit after the couple married. Prince William says he was amazed and in awe of what India has achieved and what the future holds. The Riverside Municipal Airport held its 24th annual air show last weekend. Valley View News reporter Erica Sims has more on this story. The name chain formation flybys grabbed the attention of many at the Riverside Air Show. People came from different places to this community event. Antique military airplanes used in World War II were displayed as well as others. Frank Donnelly opened up the air show with Dr. D's old-time aerobatics. Children and adults were allowed to get into some of the airplanes depending on if the owner of the plane agreed to it. One of the planes named Jesus is Lord matched how the owner and his wife met. We met at church. We had a common friend who was uh, inviting Maureen to come to church. And one day she walked in the front door and in the first second I knew I had to check this girl out. One of our dates was we went to the Riverside Air Show and for me that was the first. And then three years later we're married and now this is our first one together. The Riverside Air Show is one of the largest family entertainment events held in Riverside. One of the pilot's daughters says she has been riding planes since she was three and loves coming to these types of events. I like watching the flybys because I think it's really cool to look at all the different types of airplanes that are here. And it's really awesome to see that like so many different people fly so many different planes. And it's not I, like aviation isn't just limited, you know, to like Cessnas or they're not limited to these types of planes. You know, there's so many things that you can do. The air show was estimated to have brought out about 90,000 people. Flight instructor and pilot Daniel Watering has attended the air show since he was three. I was walking the show with my mom and I was watching airplanes fly and said someday I'm going to fly in that air show and so it's a little pro point of pride for me to be involved with the Riverside Air Show because I was a kid dreaming about flying at one point and now, now here I am I get to do it and I get to fly some pretty cool stuff. In Riverside, Erica Sims for Valley View News. Thank you for watching Valley View News. I'm Jamie Perez. And I'm Jarena Silva. Have a good day.